Senate Chief Whip Ali Ndume has alleged that President Bola Tinubu is held captive by forces in the presidential villa who have been feeding him with lies and shielding him from selfless Nigerians who can tell him the truth. Ndume made the allegation yesterday while speaking with journalists at the National Assembly Complex in Abuja. He was reacting to a resolution of the Senate which advised the federal government to address the hunger in the land or face the wrath of the people. Ndume had on Tuesday co-sponsored a motion moved by Chairman Committee on Senate Services, Senator Sunday Karimi, titled Urgent Need to Address Food Insecurity and Market Exploitation of Consumables in Nigeria. This is coming as President Bola Tinubu directed a comprehensive review of various government projects and procurement processes. State House correspondent reports on the key decisions made during the latest Federal Executive Council meeting. Government is set to be a continuum in the Nigeria politics space, but it also comes with its challenges, including the persistent problem of government projects spanning various and multiple administrations that require additional funding. These projects, often plagued by augmentations and variations, have historically led to escalated costs and delays, burdening the nation's finances and hindering development. This issue has now got the attention of the president and the Federal Executive Council. Today we don't have so many projects that were approved as a result of that. But of note is to say that Mr. President, in line with his thinking of ensuring that there is uh, probity, proficiency, and diligence in project execution, has directed that all projects that require additional funding, especially major projects of the Ministry of Works, be looked at once again so that there will be further deliberation on that at the next council. The directive aims to ensure that all projects are meticulously reviewed before the next council meeting. The Minister of Budget elaborates on the President's commitments to fiscal discipline, highlighting the reconciliation between various financial acts. The Federal Executive Council had set up a committee under the every chairmanship of the Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice to review the Public Procurement Act, and I think you'll be better placed to speak on that. However, the, after a robust discussion, Mr. President directed that all ministries, departments, and agencies should review <coughs> their intended procurement as provided for in the appropriation, such that where there are gaps between appropriated sums and sums required to do the, uh, to execute the project that can be brought to the attention of both the Ministry of Budget and National Planning and Federal Ministry of Finance. In addition, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation stresses the urgency of updating the Procurement Act, which he says has not been revised since 2007. Because of the changing dynamics, it is important that we bring these uh, act, the content of the act, to be in tandem with the happenings in the society. So that was why the Mr. President directed that a good basis for performance, especially when it comes to infrastructural development, is to ensure that we have a solid uh, procurement act in order to avoid corruption and also stem the tide of abandoned uh, projects. The council discussed the establishment of a new Ministry of Livestock Development and also addressed issues related to press freedom and the Daily Trust newspaper reporting of the Samoa Agreement alleging LGBT considerations by the country. Disturbing reports by uh, um, um, Daily Trust. That is being handled because we are conscious of press freedom. And if you notice, the present administration has not and will not, you know, tamper with press freedom. And we have written to the Ombudsman 
made a complaint to the ombudsman to look at this report, and we have cited examples where we feel that Daily Trust has got it wrong, so that Daily Trust can come clean and also uh, mention, uh, mention or apologize uh, to the nation, to government and to the nation. There is no harm in saying we are wrong in this one. We apologize and then we get it right. Before the commencement of the meeting, the council congratulated the president on his re-election as ECOWAS chairman, praising his commitment to Nigeria's and Africa's growth. The president also swore in eight new permanent secretaries. Adesua, Omoruan, Arise News. Well, thank you, Adesua, for that report. We'll find a number of things uh, yeah. this morning, and a number of things have happened. So there's a more agreement, and um, still that issue with the daily trust. But very importantly, it's a statement made by uh, Senator Ali Ndumi, the chief whip of the um, Senate, and just talking about how people are hungry. OK, so I'll, I'll try to put all of these things together. And welcome back again, Ayo. Uh, it has to be said, the statement by daily trust, yes, there was no express apology, but it was carved in such a way that it pretty much alluded to the fact that he could, the paper could have made mistakes. And it did go ahead to say, if it found one that he made mistakes, he would definitely apologize. So I think that is also explanatory. And when you look at it strongly, there was a back pager, an editorial back pager, on Daily Trust about two days ago, that where the editorial writer expressly did state that the paper did goof, that it wasn't a proper work of you know, investigative journalism going through the process and all of that. Because when you read all the documents, you cannot preempt something and think that it is. If it was not expressively stated, LGBT rights and things like that, you cannot say because, oh, now there's a new interpretation to anything that has to be sex and sexual tools and it concerns any, no. Was it expressly stated there? That's the bone of contention. And if it was not expressly stated there, it's a non-issue. The paper did goofed. It was preemptive. The interpretation was wrong. And it should apologize. On this, I side with the government on this. And let's stop pushing this beyond, you know, because I see other groups who have been writing as regards this, no. Where the government is wrong, would objectively state it. But on this, the government has no fault. And if you also check the historical background of the Samoa Agreement, it's in consideration of the Cotonou Declaration of the early 2000s that finally expired recently. So let us set that out. As regards the need now for government to be able to look at projects again and all of that and see about variations. Yes, variations will definitely increase because when you look at it, the uh, forex situation when most of these projects were started are not the forex situation today. And we have to be careful. But another thing I'd like to hit the government for this moment is their misplaced priority. You are talking of variation for roads, projects that you should have continued. But this was the same government that went to start the coastal road. That's going to cost them about $15 billion. And when you look at that money, that money can easily complete most of the pre-existing roads on ground. So says the minister Umayi. This is the same government that has gone ahead to complete a, a, a vice presidential lodge of 21 billion. We've seen a lot of reckless men. This is the same government that went ahead to expend 90 billion on hard operations. At the time we are broke. So this is a case of a lot of misplaced priorities. It's, also, it's good, yes, when government is saying, okay, we have to look at the cost again, look at variation and things like that, you know, to be able to get accountability and integrity of the project. But this government too has mismanaged a lot of money. And that's a sad reality. As regards to Leon Dume, he has every right to say anything he wants to say, that, oh, there's no access to the president. But I do not think the president is not trying to address some of the issues. His ideas have not just been good enough. This was the same president that recently came out to say that, okay, we'll, we'll be able to seize the tariff on imports for a couple of months and all of that. Right. But where was Ali Ndume? Was the president, I'm, I'm going to ask Senator Ali Ndume, was the president responsive when he granted 90 billion for hard operations? He can say anything he wants to say now. What we should do is how can we tackle those ideas that are being put forth for the president to be able to make it better? All right, thank you. Uh, Dr. Abati? Okay, let's look at the uh, issues. One of the issues, has to do with Alain Dume saying that the president is insulated. That is a lie. 
I do not think that the president of Nigeria is insulated from you know, the reality of Nigeria. After all, when he went to the mosque the other day, people told him, even power. He's a Yoruba man. He knows what it means to say, even power. In the last week, the president of Nigeria has taken steps to address the problem of hunger. We have had uh, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, uh, Senator Kiari, suddenly emerging from the shadows and saying, oh, this is what the government wants to do. Although uh, Mr. Ononoga says similar things, but Mr. Ononoga, who is special advisor on information and strategy, deleted his own post. But uh, Kiari, Senator Kiari, still has his own post. Uh, he finally got an opportunity to be present in the uh, governance uh, uh, process. So I don't think, uh, I don't agree with uh, Senator Ali Ndume. Senator Chief Whoop, you know, Senate Chief, Chief Whoop, saying that President uh, uh, Tinubu has been insulated from the reality of Nigeria. If he was insulated from the reality of Nigeria, he would not introduce a livestock transformation plan. He would not talk about a ministry of uh, livestock that we are recommending that uh, the person to occupy that ministry, when they announce it officially, should come from uh, Arisenus, from this Arisenus. table, <laughs> and should be Ayomaru Ese. You know, that's our own uh, recommendation from this direction. So that's set to say, Senator Ali Indume. And I keep saying, as I said yesterday, that President Tinubu should not succumb to blackmail. There's been a lot of blackmail coming from the northern part of the country, coming from key persons from the northern part of the country, on food insecurity, and also on the Samoa Agreement. Now, I go to the Samoa Agreement. The Samoa Agreement, uh, the NBA, the Nigerian Bar Association, the president, came forward and said, look, this thing is not true. But they keep pushing this thing in order to label the administration. No, the presidency, the MBA, other informed persons have said this is not true. Yes, in November 2023, there was an attempt to put the LGBTQ issues into the document, but we're told that that was resisted by Nigeria. I bet in any case, there are protocols about our municipal laws. So this intimidation, this blackmail of the uh, Tinubu administration should not be allowed uh, to stand. Well, the public procurement, that's the third issue that you brought, brought up. Well, public procurement, the uh, Chinubu administration is saying they are going to take a second look at it. Public uh, procurement council. We have not had a public procurement council since 2007. Now, the public procurement council is a, an oversight body. You know, we have a bureau of public procurement, but you also need a public procurement council to look at it. Now, the attorney general has been directed to take a second look at the Public Procurement Act. Now, this uh, public procurement matter is very important. Many Nigerians may not know it. I have been on two boards in this country. I was on the board of the uh, governing council of Alabisi or Nobanja University. Procurement was an issue there. I was on the board of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund, where that one procurement was not an issue because we were just basically begging for money from people to support security uh, in Lagos State. You see this in our procurement. What Tinubu is trying to address is the evil of variation. People will bring uh, something to council and they will tell you uh, after some time, oh, that this project, this particular project, uh, there have been variations, uh, inflation has gone up, uh, exchange rate has gone up, and they will do variations. It's an avenue for corruption. So I think I support the Tinubu administration saying that a second look must be taken at projects that have been under the project, uh, procurement trajectory for the last 13 years to see whether people have been lying about variation, 
Where are people, in fact, have been lying about the integrity of the project? You will recall that the uh, Minister of uh, uh, Information made it clear that this does not affect ongoing projects. We hope that the Chinumbu administration will also not face a situation in the future where they will be asked, OK, what did you do with variation? Variation is always the way to see money. And we need a procurement council. We need a review of the Procurement Act. And I hope that the Attorney General will act expeditiously in that regard. Yes. I wanted to talk about the Samoa Agreement. And it is as follows. The uh, 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 Minister of Information has said that that matter will be put before the, uh, the Ombudsman panel of the Nigerian uh, newspapers uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, Publishers Association of Nigeria. And I think that is a good move. That body is led by Mr. Eluem Emeka Izeze, uh, former managing director, editor in chief of The Guardian. He understands the issues. Now, what Minister Idris has done, and I think he has to be commended, is that, look, he's trying to resolve the problem in house. And he will be remembered for giving strength, energy, to the in-house mechanism. Because the argument within the industry is that, look, the issue is whether government should regulate or the system should self-regulate. And I see Minister Idris trying to see that the system itself self-regulates. Now the ball is in the court in that regard of the Ombudsman uh, Committee, and we would like to see what they do with it. it. It also seems that the government is not going to go to court against Daily Trust. But Daily Trust has not apologized. They have not taken a definitive position. They say that they are even more superior than the Nigerian Bar Association. But this is Nigeria. It's complicated. Mm, it's complicated. All right, so I'll just talk about the hunger in the land, because of course that's the very pertinent issue on the table this morning. A lot of um, conversations have been had in terms of the level of poverty, the price of goods, and especially the price of food and food inflation currently. If you look at the cost of a basic food that a number of people could afford, at least at the very minimum, unfortunately now it has become almost impossible to be able to buy those things. The cost of a loaf of bread, the cost of a bag of rice. So just go into the um, streets or speak to people in Nigeria, you'd understand the level of hunger. And now Senator Ali Ndume is saying that the response of the president, he's quite concerned about it because he's not acting in the way and with the urgency that he ought to with regards to what is fast becoming a food crisis, if not already, we don't have a food crisis on our hands in terms of the president's response. And that it's because of the fact that plutocrats around the president are preventing him from speaking or people who would tell him the truth from speaking to him and in the words, caging him. And this is, <laughs> trying to look for an excuse or a reason why he feels the president hasn't responded quite effectively to the challenges of hunger and poverty in the land currently. However, it is difficult to believe that because in recent times, the president has come out to speak about interventions by his administration to addressing and tackling food insecurity, including the provision of fertilizers to, um, you know, to farmers across the nation, going through sub-nationals, so the governors, and going through the uh, senators and House of Representatives members. He's also spoken about the very controversial livestock ministry, also as part of addressing concerns around opportunities in agriculture and ensuring that people are able to maximize the benefits of agriculture and hopefully get more food on, ta on the tables of many Nigerians. He then accuses um, the president of keeping silence more in recent times and saying instead we hear more from his spokespersons and even mentioned uh, the chief, um, the spokesperson of the president, Adjuri Nglali, who is releasing press statements and perhaps what um, Senator Ali Ndume is saying in all of these things is that he wants to talk to the president, or a number of them have been trying to speak to the president, and he's been fenced off by the handlers of the president, and unfortunately he's not hearing that. I don't think it's, it would be plausible to imagine that there's anyone in Nigeria currently that is not aware of the situation of things on ground, especially with regards to poverty and lack of food on the tables of many. 
particularly the president of the federation, it is more, it, it is an indictment if the senator is saying that he's far removed from the plight of the people. We talk a lot about the fact that the elites don't seem to understand just how bad the situation is. But like you cited, Dr. Bati, now, even when they're driving in their, in their convoys and motorcades, they hear people standing on the street and saying that they are hungry, people are starving, people don't have food on their table. So if he's, if he's talking about how the president has tackled insecurity, saying that that's one of the reasons why farmers, particularly in the north, have not been able to go to their farms, then I can understand that because we have talked about that here and uh, again and again, that indeed we haven't quite seen that appreciable effort in tackling things. And like you said, Rufai, the, what, what we keep seeing are interventions that don't seem to cut it. Instead, you wonder how the process of arriving at that intervention happened. And then you can imagine that maybe the handlers or the advisors are not doing, you know, are not quite doing what they're supposed to be doing. But in terms of the hunger in the land, let me speak to that this morning. The truth is that there has to be a state of emergency with regards to that because we understand the attendant effect of when people are hungry. Crime rates will go higher. There are talks about people, you know, agitations, rumblings here and there, and people wanting to protest and challenge the fact that the, the government isn't listening to the people. There are agitations in the land, and it would be in the best interest of the administration to tackle issues around poverty and hunger. There have been a number of things mentioned. If those things were actually implemented, then perhaps we might see the result of this amongst the people. Nigerians don't want a lot. They just want a government that works and a government that does what it's supposed to do in terms of working in the interest of the people, welfare, and at least an appreciable level of life. What is happening with the conversations around the minimum wage, um, about, about minimum wage? Why has this stretched for so long? Why is the government focusing or majoring on the minor and leaving the most important things, making it seem as if they are not listening or perhaps are even totally oblivious to the plight of Nigerians. I do not want to believe that. I just think that in terms of critical thinking and looking for solutions that will actually work for the Nigerian people is what the challenge is.